folks and welcome back to my channel on videos related to mainframe stuff um, today I have a special treat uh, for me and I guess for you too I'm gonna look into a very ancient uh, mainframe operating system called MVT um, if you recall uh, the history of, uh, of the IBM 360 mainframe when they released the uh, very first IBM uh, S360 uh, mainframe back in when they well they announced in 64 and then released it in 66 um, they offered a couple of operating systems with it the first one was OS360 and the other one was DOS uh, 360 now uh, they intended OS360 to be the operating system for larger uh, sized uh, mainframes or the ones with larger memory and devices footprints and DOS 360 was going to be a temporary um, a placeholder or temporary operating system for people who um, who had smaller machines and couldn't get OS 360 to fit in those smaller machines until they got OS 360 sorted out and could eventually then uh, and then IBM figured everybody would eventually run OS 360 uh, down the line. Well, um, what happened is that DOS 360 eventually became um, uh, DOS uh, VS, right? Um, uh, after uh, IBM announced a virtual memory uh, support in their in their S360 architecture and DOS, DOS 360 eventually became um, um, uh, DOS VSE eventually became just VSE um, then it became uh, eventually down the road it became Z VSE and DOS uh, or in its latest incarnation Z VSE is still very much um, in use today. Um, even people with larger mainframes who have developed a, a lot of in-house applications for the um, DOS 360 or DOS VS operating system are still, are still running ZVSE today. Um, probably a good third probably of IBM mainframes today still run DOS VSE. Um, However, uh, OS 360 continued to develop as well. When they announced it, it was available in three versions. Uh, um, let's put it here. It was announced and, and delivered in one number one as uh, OS 360 MFT. Um, and you could also run it as OS 360 MVT. And there was also a PCP version of it. Um, now it's important to understand that this was all the same code, um, all same source code. It, it was just a selection people made at compile time, because yes, back then you had to compile and and sysgen your own version, um, and then you would decide if you wanted to have either a multiple fixed uh, tasks um, version meaning that you would have to decide at the beginning how large were the virtual memory partitions that you had in the operating system and then it was you could still change them but it was going to be an operator uh, would have to go and change the partition partitions um, or if you wanted a multiple virtual tasks uh, version of OS 360 where you would um, where the programmer would set um, the size of the partition at runtime, um, and PCP was a simpler version which uh, was quickly abandoned. And now later on, out of this came um, OS VS one, um, OS VS two, which became eventually MVS three seven, MVS three eight. Uh, MVS SP and then uh, MVS XA, MVS ESA, uh, OS 390, and now ZOS. Okay, 
this is the probably the most successful line uh, obviously then there was also uh, the um, uh, VM well, it was the beginning it was called CP um, 67 which eventually became uh, VM 390 and as you know then became VM SP VM XA and um, then uh, VM ESA and ZVM. Um, there's also there was ACP, which is, was like a high transaction operating system uh, for the airlines, the credit card companies, and then uh, TPF and uh, and this is still very much uh, in use today as well. So at least four versions of the operating system obviously then you had music um, and um, you had a couple of other um, operating systems uh, as well but I guess the two main ones uh, or the three main ones were always VM DOS VSE and uh, OS uh, 360 so um, you can still run I guess most of this operating system, I don't know if CP67 is still available, but obviously BM37 is very much available. Um, I've never found an image of ACP or TPF. Music is available, uh, obviously. AIX, I guess the early AIX versions uh, are lost. And uh, a couple of other specialty operating systems are still available. Now, um, one of the things that's available, and I'm going to make the download link available in my uh, below this video in the video description, is MVT. MVT was an operating system that was in use throughout the late 60s up to maybe uh, mid 70s. I guess some some installations I heard were still running it as late as 82, 83. Uh, it was a virtual uh, memory operating system with with variable partition sizes, meaning variable. Uh, region or address space sizes. Uh, if you download uh, the link I have in the description below, you'll get uh, into a directory like this. You started with Hercules, I'm assuming you have Hercules in your path, uh, which I do, obviously. Uh, as you can see here, you start with Hercules minus F conf ASP. Now, this image has uh, something interesting, which is and by the way, this image was made available by Kevin Leonard, the JS3 maintainer for Hercules and TK4. He's had this image available for a while on his website. And what this, why this, this is a special um, image because it contains two job scheduling systems within the same image. One is ASP, which is the precursor of, uh, of JS3 which we looked at in another video and then he also has HASP available as well. HASP uh, is what became eventually JS2. As, he, as some people in the community pointed out, uh, HASP stands for Houston Automatic Stool, a spool program. Sorry about that. <laughs> and, uh, um, and let's see how to operate this image. So once you log in, you will see you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 833, uh, well, eight DASDs or disk devices, seven or 3330s, which are uh, disk devices that were very much used throughout the 70s, and some are the older 2340s from the late 60s. Um, as we can see here, there are some are uh, committed to ASP um, um, spooling, and some others are. Uh, just to or hasp spooling devices so once you're in here and then we see we have a bunch of uh, screens and in fact TSO is installed on this version it's a very early version of TSO and there's not really not much you can do with TSO there um, but I'll show how to log in anyway and then obviously as uh, was typical in those days a bunch of tape devices um, and of course some printers as well uh, log and uh, and uh, I know that class A goes to device E, uh, which is still 
and then we have a card reader here and the card punch. So once we started a, um, a terminal connected to port 3270s, 32, we'll, we'll IPL this machine with IPL 150, device 150, and here already comes up. And if we just press enter again, it comes up with um, um, uh, asking for confirmation of the date. We'll say R00, u for continue. And what's happening now is just or uh, ASP, the predecessor of Jest 3, starts to come up. And as you may remember, Jest 3 wants its own console, which is here. And um, how do we get this started? Well, let's clear first. And then asterisk S J S S. Okay, so. And ASP is up and running. ASP has obviously a sub command of um, of JS3. Um, let's see here what's running. So you see the master scheduler. The output of display all obviously is slightly different um, than in MBS. Uh, first of all, there is no DA comma all. There's only DA. Um, and then it shows you the partitioning of the memory because um, that was an important thing back then. So you would have uh, the master scheduler occupying um, for memory from uh, 8 megabytes, 1, 3, 130 to 8 megabytes, 192. So the operating system would occupy 62 ki uh, kilo kilobytes. And then the monitor is installed here and then ASP install or uses about 400, 500 kilobytes of virtual memory which those days actually was quite a lot and then we can start to issue um, uh, commands to ASP um, so we see uh, I comma S uh, gives us an ASP one there's only one node in this cluster here it's online and IPL and everything is up and running. Um, now, how do we? Uh, we could we could obviously launch a TSO, and uh, how would we do that? Well, we would, TSO obviously needs TCAS, uh, TCAM, sorry. Um, and let's see if it's, yeah, TCAM is up and running. And then once you have TCAM, you can start. Because this version of TSO didn't work with VTAM, there was no VTAM still uh, at that time, and for some reason TSO fails to come up. Uh, it starts. Time sharing is in progress, and then it ends. Uh, yeah, TSO is up and running as you can see here. I start another terminal less uh, um, uh, session and I get IKJ. And people who do mainframe stuff they know IKJ is always uh, TSO. And we all know that IAT is just three, we know that HASP. Uh, is a JS2, and by the way, HASP is the only four letter code in IBM's mainframe world. Um, and IEF is the, um, is the nucleus of MVS, etc. So this is up and running, and what we can do here is we can say log on, go back here, log on IBM user, and we're in, and uh, TSO has started. Mm, why it's not progressing is not clear to me. Um, uh, oh, uh, because there is two. 
there's two T cams running and that's confusing to you. So here it is proceeding. It's working very, very slowly. Um, it's confused between the two T cams. And I don't know how to stop the two, the second T cam, but it's working. However, once you log into TSO, you'll notice there's nothing in there. Um, it's just a command line, which is all people had when, when TSO was released for the first time. And they were already happy because they didn't have to do punch cards anymore and could uh, work on a terminal. Um, yeah, obviously um, it's working on some resources. Um, let's stop TSO. Uh, okay, so ZTP. Let's see what's what's around. It's actually good problem solving here. Uh, why is just three no, uh, ASP not responding anymore? Not sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, it looks like we royally confused MVT here. Remember, that's a very early version of um, of MVS. So. Um, yeah, so the way to end this is we type star return. We get control of the MVS, MVT console again. And we see that, uh, um, yeah, TCAM is closed down. Okay. Now, what you see here is there's a message waiting. So how do we get to the message? Let's see at the message scroll settings oh uh, yeah okay so we would have to change this insert rd remove the n and now yeah you get the messages to scroll again okay so hmm. so looks like we really messed up this machine um Let's do as, let's re-IPL ZEOD for end of day processing. And Quiest didn't exist in this form back then. So uh, we stop the machine, stop all, and IPL again. One fifty. Okay. Um, reply again. R zero zero comma U. ASP console comes up. We start it with JSS. Okay. Let's start. Take him again. And let's start TSO again. Okay. Then we go here and we say log on IBM user. Okay, and we're in. So this time it worked. Um, there is no RFE here or RPF, obviously no ISPF either. You can do um, help. There is some functionality here, uh, but not much. So how did people work back then, uh, right? So let's close this TSO terminal. What they did is they used uh, the card reader. So remember we can um, launch jobs through the card reader by um, doing device init 00c and let's do a um, core map jcl that's it the job initialized and ran 
Uh, okay, there's a job here that went into the output queue, uh, which I can see with i comma q. Um, now let's go see what's happening in the print directory. Uh -huh. There's nothing with printing here. And the reason is hmm, that Yep. Um, in the image as defined by Kevin Leonard, uh, the printer file was not initialized, and that's why it's not printing there. Um, but in the image that I have available for download, uh, in, the, in the description of the video, it is uh, available for download, so you can get it there, and it will print correctly, class A to printer 00E. Um, so let's try another job. Um, Let's see, time test, let's see what this does, okay, um, something ran here, um, by the way the PL1 and Fortran and COBOL uh, compilers are installed so you can actually compile stuff here and send it for a compilation. But let's see how you would actually uh, work with uh, Hasp, which is more familiar to people, right? So if you don't want to work with ASP, you don't even have to re-IPL, you just get out of JS3. Um, let's set the scrolling of the console again. Okay. Uh, let's stop TSO, we don't need that. Uh, ZTP to stop TCAM. Okay. Yes, so we only have the master scheduler, scheduler and the monitor running. So now we do uh, start HASP. HASP wants some options. We say reply to message 5 format to format the spool data sets or volumes and uh, no requests okay spool 1 is being formatted maximum of 2 printers ex exceeded um, and some readers and the initiators have been started Right, and printed two is associated with A and G, J. That's it. Um, Hasp is up and running. Yeah, all available functions complete. Everybody knows this message from Hasp. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's Hasp 400i. Um, let's see what the address spaces are running on this machine now. We have the master schedule, the monitor, and HASP, which is predecessor JS2, as well as some readers already up and running. So it doesn't have to start restart an address space every time we have a job to execute. Um, we can again uh, execute some jobs. Um, disk map. Okay. We executed the job and went through just to, uh, through uh, Hasp and printing on printer one. Obviously, the printer one is not defined here because the file is not initialized. Um, so that's why we probably okay. Oops, dollar uh, da will show that. Just who has no active jobs. Um, so this is how you run things. Um, uh, any PL1 or assembler or Fortran job should work out of the box. Um, I've tried it on with my own programs. 
and it works uh, okay. Uh, no, no major issues here. It is obviously uh, a much reduced functionality you'll see with Hasp or with uh, MVT here, but it's fascinating that we can still run programs and still do th stuff with this uh, operating system from the early, from the mid 60s up to the mid 70s. Um, how do we stop? Um, let me see if, yeah. Yeah, uh, display time was already available on MVT. Uh, obviously, the ASM was not available. Yeah, because uh, the virtual storage monitor was not available yet. But um, that's about it. If you want to stop HASP, you do HASP term, dollar HASP term. Yeah, and HASP ends without much fanfare. Uh, no, oh, actually, it's not down yet. P hasp. Mm. Yeah, dollar p hasp comma end ends hasp. Um, and it looks like it's down. Let me see. Yeah, that's it. So Z E O D end of day. You see that Hercules gets some sense messages here, and that's it. And then we can um, stop all, quit. And this is our run of MVT with both ASP and HASP. Um, in case you're interested in running very old operating systems, uh, for any questions, please uh, uh, drop me a message below this video. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future videos from, uh, from me. Thank you very much. All the best.